This is Ken Hill, and uh, welcome to this kind of a different format than um, I've done in the past. And this format is something that we're going to have on uh, YouTube as well as uh, right embedded into uh, my Substack. And before we get into to the topic at hand, which is you know building your your off season plan, I wanted to give uh, some thanks to Dion at Blaze because. One of the things that I've done with Blades is we do a monthly call. I do a call with um, Colin Mullen, and we do a couple calls a month. And this one turned out so well uh, and had had such good reception. I asked uh, I asked Dion if I could use this in a video, and he said, "Yeah, of course." So this is one of the topics that we've already covered on Blaze. If you don't know about Blaze, Blaze is a great online uh, training format uh, for the motorsports world. Uh, they do some other things as well, but just absolutely one of the easiest ways to get professional coaching um, at honestly very, very low rates. So I'm not going to do an infomercial on it. Check out Blaze. Uh, they do a great job, but this is just a, kind of a sample of one of the member member calls that they have. So, all right, let's get into it. Building your off-season plan. And I'll start this off with a story of um, essentially, you know, me, uh, my first year road racing at AFM. So I get through my first year of road racing at AFM and I, you know, completely hooked, completely in this. And I want to go faster. Everybody's like, oh, dude, you know, you haven't been riding a motorcycle very long. You got to get a dirt bike, get a dirt bike. I'm like, oh, awesome. I'm going to get a dirt bike. You know, we got trails around us and this is, this is great. So just like any other uh, enterprising um, young male, I go out and buy a dirt bike. And of course I bought the, the worst possible motorcycle I could ever buy. I bought an XR 600. And yeah, I think the only thing I learned was how to, you know, pick it up off the ground um, how to get stuck trying to go up hills, um, uh, trying to start the thing when it was flooded. I mean, it was just a horrible experience. It was it was the absolutely wrong, wrong thing to buy. It was the right idea. The execution was completely, completely off. I should have been on an XR100 doing dirt track uh, is what I, what I should have been doing. So yeah, fast forward many years of trial and error, of uh, what works, what doesn't work, and how we approach this as professionals and how professionals look at you putting together your off-season training program. Because it's it's easy to say, oh, I want to do this or I want to do that. But is that really what's holding you back? Is that really what you, know, what you need? So we're going to take a pretty big, pretty deep dive into this. So hang in there with me. All right. So what are we going to cover? Setting goals, uh, reviewing previous goals, uh, identifying what is holding you back. And then we're going to we're going to talk about some drills that are based really off the fundamentals, and um, that there's there's a really important point uh, that comes with that. So let's just let's just get after it. All right, let's talk goals. And the first one is, what were your goals going into 2023? Uh, here we are at the end of 2023, and did you accomplish them? So it's really important to pause here and think about okay. Um, did I have goals? Did I meet those goals? Um, did I exceed those goals or am I falling short of those goals? Do my 2023 goals align with my long-term goals? So really important question to ask. And do you have different goals in 2024? Is it something like, okay, cool. I want to get to the next level of where I was at. Or is it something where it's like, I didn't accomplish what I need to accomplish. Why didn't I accomplish that? And let's let's dive into that. So, I, th I mean, really where what our off season training program is is built around is your goals, and more importantly, what's holding you back from those goals. So, all right, exactly. Here we go. What is holding you back? And there's a lot here. Just like if you look at my experience with dirt riding, right? I had very little time on two wheels. So I didn't have established field references. I didn't have a high comfort level. I, I mean, I just I, I just didn't have good coordination, quite honestly. And so spending time on a dirt bike was was great, but yeah, completely in the wrong environment. So having to ask yourself, okay, is it technique based? 
Is it physical fitness? Is it mental fitness? Is it your equipment? Is it time? Is it your, is it your budget? Is it something else? And these are really important, really important questions to, to ask yourself, right? Because if you're worried about, say, getting overslowing your corner entries, but you can't complete, you know, three laps without being fatigued, well, then you know, we got to look at your physical fitness. Just as in if you're having issues, say with your equipment, if you're not able to finish a day or finish something and something's going wrong with your equipment and that's holding you back, that's where we're gonna want to look at things. So Think about what is holding you back in the grand scheme of things. And again, great, great to list these out, but there's just more to thinking, oh, I got to break harder or I got to accelerate harder, or I have to be on track, which we're going to dive into quite a bit here. So these are some great points to take a look at. Yeah, building drills based on fundamentals. This goes back to the ginormous mistake that I made getting into, you know, getting into my first off season, which is I'm going to ride a dirt bike and this is going to make me fast. Well, what part of that was going to make me fast? What, what, you know, what, what, what did I actually need to work on? So if we're able to pinpoint the things that we just talked about, deliberate training equals deliberate results. So we've got to be able to narrow those things down. If it's like, do, I keep getting passed on corner entries. I keep getting passed on exits. I keep fatiguing. Um, you know, I'm struggling because I only have four days a year to go to the track. Whatever it might be, we have to train for those things, right? So you're you're going to ride like you train and you're going to race like you train. You're going to ride like you train. So we need to have deliberate training so we can get the deliberate results that we want. And yeah, from there, we look at breaking your training into categories by thinking like a complete athlete. What does that mean? So when you look what a complete athlete is, is we look at the the the, the three elements of an athlete, right? We look at the, the technique in your craft. We look at your physical fitness and your mental fitness. All three of those have to be looped together to have success. And you can, you can have different aspects of them, but we want to think about all three of those being looped. And as one gets better, another one is going to lag behind. So we're always looking at looping those things together to, to complete your, complete your picture. Knowledge objectives versus skill objectives. We often think that the only way we're going to improve is being on track and by by doing laps, more seat time, right? I need more seat time. And yeah, I mean, that 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 makes sense if you know what you're to be training for. So just because you're putting in laps or you're putting in reps, if they're the wrong reps or the wrong technique, then it's not doing you any good. So this is why we have to go back, right, to the, the things that we just talked about is think about what's holding you back and have deliberate and focused drills for those things, deliberate training, right, deliberate results. Now, knowledge objectives are things that are done off the track, away from the track. I mean, I mean, there's some things basically not being on track. So these are the knowledge skills that that there's so much behind the scenes things that we can do to improve in the off season to help you out. So we're going to get into that quite a bit, as well as a bunch of skill objectives. And we're going to break these categories down with some knowledge and skill objectives on each on each one of them. So, all right, here we go. Let's talk about vehicle placement. So with vehicle placement, we're looking at knowledge objectives of, we can have track maps, videos, and data. So what does that mean? So understanding what vehicle placement is about. Where do I you have an exit direction? Where do you have the slow point of the corner? Is it an exit corner? Is it an entry corner? Is it a balance corner? What are you trying to do before you get there? And it, it, it'll shortcut if going to a track you've never been to, or maybe it's a track that you've got, you know, 10,000 laps at, and you're going to work on being closer to the apex. You're going to work on a better slow point of the corner. Well, it starts here. So having knowledge objectives, one, yes, track dynamics, identifying what type of corner it is, identifying where the slow point is, identifying where the brake release is, 
completely shortcuts your your process when you get on track. Very difficult to find these things when you're when you're on track. Same thing with videos. You can look at videos, your previous videos, somebody else's reference video, and you can look to see where they're at. Uh, it makes such a big difference. And of course, data too. You can start looking at your data as well as reference uh, reference data as well. So a lot that you can do away from the track. Google Earth uh, is a great one, right? You can look at Google Earth and, and look at some of these uh, aspects of the track away from the track. Skill objectives. Ah, this is great. So many things that you can do here with skill objectives, again, away from the track. Whether you go and you rent a skid pad and you go and work on you know, putting cones out uh, and you can work on entry corners and exit corners by just simply putting four cones out and working on those things. Um, you can do go-karts and thinking about, like if a go-kart, for instance, if the thing's sliding around uh, and you're missing apexes, right? You're going slow, right? You're not going to improve from that. So go-karts are another great way to build proper uh, vehicle placement. Uh, mini bikes are another great one, right? Little dirt track mini bikes, fantastic. Uh, training probably... Probably my, if I could pick only one type of motorcycle stuff to do, that might be it. Uh, so many bikes are just fantastic. And of course, sim work is great, right? You can you can have sim, whether you're a bike guy or car guy, doesn't matter, go-kart guy, you know, sims are fantastic for understanding how you should be approaching what that corner offers and the controls that you should be using for that. So a lot that you can do with vehicle placement. So if you're missing apexes, right? You're, you're, you're not consistent. We need to start here so you can ultimately keep building your program up. And again, there's a bunch here with knowledge objectives as well as, as skill objectives. All right. Vision and focus. So vision focus, of course, are just a major part of our, our sport. And there's also, we've got knowledge and skill objectives built into this. The first thing is get an eye exam. I just had mine done. I have a yearly eye exam done. Um, and yeah, it makes a big difference. We want to be able to track and see how your vision's doing. And again, you have to remember your vision, your vision is what feeds your brain the information. If you don't, if your vision skills aren't where they need to be, then how you process that information is not going to be clean. So we want to at least make sure that our, our vision is in order and it's giving it's we're in a position to get the information that we need. Plus, there's a lot of exercises that you can do. You can do simple lumosity drills. You can go play catch out front. Um, anything to get your eyes moving, scanning, play basketball, something that with the idea of getting your eyes moving. So there's a bunch of things that you can do um, with, with, your, with your vision. If you're interested, you can always write to me. I've got a great vision performance specialist that I use, uh, and you can always go to him and get a complete vision performance uh, evaluation. Highly, highly recommended, not expensive. And yeah, it's just absolutely, it'll shortcut. <laughs> if you have some some fundamental issue or an innate issue, it'll, it'll shortcut what you need to be working on. So massive fan of, massive fan of that. Also, and our vision and focus is yes, focus and breathing exercises. And at some point we're all going to be under some sort of stress and we want to make sure that we're able to access our, our technique under pressure, access our technique under pressure. And by being calm, by being able to control your breathing is what's going to control your focus. So working on some basic focus and breathing exercises are, are huge as well. Whether you're doing you know meditation or whether you're doing yoga or you're just basically giving yourself permission for a minute a day to think about your breathing goes a long, long way. So uh, you, I'm, I'm, a big, I'm a big proponent of being able to have, think about, I want to have focus on demand. So that allows me to, to uh, access my technique on demand. So we've got some triggers that we'll talk about that as well. So yeah, reference points and OODA loop. So reference points, I put them in here instead of on the track dynamics because I want them to really to be part of your, part of your vision training. So reference points, right? Getting your track maps out, 
writing down writing down your your references for every entry, every exit, thinking about you know do what does it mean for me to have the right vehicle placement? How do I know when I can truly accelerate? Um, and even writing down feel references, right? There's some places where feel references are such a big part of this. So reference points, and of course, OODA loop, which is the idea with OODA loop here is a right, observe, orient, decide, and act, but it's the loop that's important. So do you have enough inventory of references to complete your loop? So again, these are knowledge and skill objectives. Um, so much that you can do, so much that you can do with here. So, all right, that's our vision and focus. Motor controls. Yeah, these are actually all skill objectives. Uh, and there's a lot of things that you can that you can do here. Um, I've got this broken down into some bike stuff and some car stuff as, as well. Um, so <clears throat> let's talk about motor controls, right? Motor controls are all the physical inputs that you put into the vehicle, right? So whether it's your braking, your throttle, your body, your steering, even in some some degree, even if your vision is is you're moving your eyes too quickly, right? That all comes into this. So these are all the inputs that are telling your your bike or car what to do. So we need to be able to work on those and be able to control those. So first five percent, last five percent. What that simply is, is your initial input and your end of inputs, right? Are you able to control your first 5% and your last 5%? And we can do that with braking drills, right? So you can simply set up a um, in a parking lot. Uh, you can set up some braking drills. You can work on your, if you're in traffic, you can work on your braking drills. You can also work on your throttle drills. So you can work on how you go to the brakes, how you build brake pressure, how you release that pressure. Are you, are you in control of your brake graph. In other words, are you in control of when you go to the brakes? Are you in control of where you release the brakes? And more importantly, are you are you in control of how you're stopping and where you want to stop? And that we want to practice that first five and last five. And whether that's, you know, you you can sit in your motorcycle in your garage, rock it back and forth with the brake on and off to develop that skill. You can be in your car and you can simply um, just as you pull up to a stoplight, you know, first 5%, last 5% and modulate that just to see what that's like. So there's a lot of things that you can do there. Throttle drills. This is actually an interesting one that we're, I won't say that we're spending more time with it, but we're spending more time talking about it with the advent of electronics, we're seeing more, more abrupt initial throttles, initial throttle thinking we've got more electronics, but then because bikes are also more powerful, we're seeing a lot less time at full throttle, a lot less time at full throttle. So there's some things that we can do on some throttle drills. And I think the one to really focus on is your initial throttle, how you're picking the throttle up, how you're allowing weight to transfer, how you're allowing suspension to set, and how are you controlling your trajectory? So your initial throttle, there's so much to be done there, and that can be practiced. It can be practiced in your car. It can be practiced, I mean, you can have your, if, even your car, your bike, you can sit there in your driveway, uh, you know, obviously not in your garage, start it up. And even in neutral or park, you know, you can just go to the throttle and work on your initial throttle skills. Uh, you'd be surprised at how hard it is, but you'll also be surprised at what a difference it makes. Car people will start working on some left foot braking drills. Uh, there's there's a lot to be had there, uh, reducing the overlap time. Uh, it, makes, it makes, again, a, a fairly big difference. And the other one that we can work on with motor controls is turn in rate drills. So you can work on how, how you're turning in, right? Controlling the first 5% and the last 5% of that, of that movement. Um, huge difference, huge difference there. Even regardless, you can do it in a go-kart. Yeah, you can do it uh, in a parking lot on, you know, if you're, if you're doing parking lot drills. So a lot to be aware there. But again, let's, let's think about 
a, a deliberate drill, right, to get that deliberate result. So, so much stuff to be done on, on motor controls. All right, brake adjustability. So we have this one broken up into two categories, brake adjust with brake adjustability. We've got our knowledge objectives and skill objectives. And with knowledge objectives, it goes back to our track dynamics, which is thinking about as an entry corner or as an exit corner. And where is the correct brake release point for that corner? So a lot to be had there with just was just getting an idea of how you want to tackle that that particular corner and then we can take that a little bit further which is the correct brake graph for that corner right is it is it a short tight uh radius corner where a brake graph needs to be compressed is a big entry corner where you know we've got time to be able to have a different type of a brake graph so think about what the brake graph is for each type of a corner Again, knowledge objectives. I want to, yeah, I want to pause here just real quick, right? This is, let's just linger here. This is the type of stuff that goes a really long way when you get to the track. So if you have this in your mind, very difficult to be, to be lapping and being like, oh, cool. Yeah, I'm going to start working on my brake graph for that corner. You got to not have, an, have to have an idea ahead of time of what that brake graph looks like. So th these are, these are some pretty, pretty big points. Um, uh, to be able to work on away from the track. Of course, skill objectives for this, being in a position to control your brake release, being in a position to control the brake graph that you want for, for that corner. So yeah, the braking drills here are, are huge when it comes to this. And braking drills can, again, you can be in a parking lot, you can practice these and, you know, if you're driving along, you practice on your mountain bike, you can practice whatever, all these things can be all these things can be um, practiced away or at the track or at least away from the track as well. So, but the bottom line is work on them, right? Work on getting comfortable with your with with your brakes, how you go to them, how you build pressure, how you release them. All right, brake adjustability. Yeah, turn in rate and turn in point. So I think there's some things here that we can we can work on, which is knowledge objectives, track map. And I think the big thing with turn in rate is, is start to think about where you turn in dictates where you exit. And yeah, I understand for some big, gigantic, long radius corners, that's not quite it, but kind of, right? It sets you up at least for the first third of the turn. So you either have to make corrections or don't have to make corrections. So thinking about your turn in rate you know, put it on a higher priority. And honestly, this is when we're, when we're doing our track walks uh, professionally, the, honestly, the two biggest references we're looking at is an exit reference and a turn-in reference. If we have those two figured out, honestly, everything else kind of takes care of itself. So a turn-in reference point is, is a fairly big deal. You can do those, again, Google, Google Earth, Google, you know, Google Maps, video, your video, other people's videos. So start to think about that one and, and add that, make that one a little bit of a higher priority on your, on your list. So skill objectives. Yeah. I put in here anything with wheels. Uh, yeah. Go shopping and, you know, take your shopping cart in and turn late, turn in late everywhere. Uh, take your shopping cart and turn in early and slowly everywhere and see how that works. Right. I mean, try these things. Uh, Cause it, it, it absolutely works the same. So uh, again, let's bring this let's bring this up on your priority list. And the last one is body position. And there's a gazillion things that we could talk about with body position. And a lot of it, quite honestly, is is individual. So let's give you some high points to think about, which is with body position, it really is all about the hands. Meaning, are you in a position that your hands have either the 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 right amount of weight on them to be in control, but not in impede input. So pressure versus impeding input. So making sure that, yeah, you've got, you're gonna have some weight on your hands, but we don't wanna be screwing up uh, the input. And <clears throat> a lot of this comes down to core strength and working on core, this goes back to right, complete athlete, core strength. 
And are you in a position to take weight, it, weight off of your hands at turn in? Once you've turned in, it's very difficult to get weight off of your hands. You're kind of stuck with it uh, until you're at least through the slow point. So this is where I put in here, be ready so you don't have to get ready, which is triggers for core engagement. And the triggers for core engagement are simply, again, if, if I turn in, I'm able to tighten, you know, tighten up my stomach muscles, I, you know, on a bike, or are you able to engage your outside thigh, your inside foot, whatever that might be. So be in a position to take weight off of your hands, because I can guarantee you, as you go quicker, that does not get better. That does not get better. So getting it figured out early, having triggers again for core engagement and even report cards as, okay, I get to the slow point and I can at least wiggle my fingers, my hands are light. You think about, am I in a position to catch things? Um, catch things. So body position, we're not going to beat up too much other than it, I, can, I can tell you time and time again, the, the times that as we get fatigued, all the weight's going to go on your hands. And of course, you know, we all want a better lap time. We're all trying to go quick. But as soon as that weight stays on the hands, we're going to start slipping. The car's going to get, car bike's going to get pissed off. It's not going to do what you want it to do. You're going to end up getting more fatigued and more frustrated. So big report card there on body position is it's really, it really is all about, uh, all about the hands. So, all right. Hopefully we've given you a lot to think about uh, because there is a ton of stuff that you ton of things that you can do and in this sport this sport that we care so much about it's all we think about everything in our lives or are, are, we're thinking about being on track thinking about going quicker enjoying our time on track our time on track is actually it's not a lot and it's also really expensive so Training for these, knowing what to train for and training for these things away from the track completely shortcuts that, that, you know, that time um, on track of being able to meet your goals. So yeah, take this a little bit more seriously. Think about the consequences. The better trained you are, one, you're going to meet your goals and honestly, the, the safer you're going to be. So all right, there you go. Uh, again, I want to thank Deanna Blaze for uh, letting me uh, borrow this. Uh, we had, again, we had such great response from it that uh, I wanted to be able to share it, and Dion uh, is letting us share it with everyone, uh, everyone uh, on here. So, again, thank you very much, and uh, hopefully, this worked out for you.